God's grace, his mercy, and his peace to you, dear brothers and sisters. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The text of the Gospel tonight, the comforting words from Jesus the Christ to his apostles and disciples. When the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. There's no question about it. You need help. You know you do. I need help. As you know that you need help, you know that you need spiritual help because your mind and your heart are truly not conformed to God's will. You need physical help because, in fact, you are dying. You need help. No question about it. So Jesus did that which was necessary for you and for me. Jesus ascended in order to send the Helper. We are in that unique period in the life of the church. The ascension of Jesus and the coming of the promised Holy Spirit for the day of Pentecost. Jesus ascended in order to send that Helper. But too often for us, human pride steps in the way now, I don't need any help. Nope, not me. Maybe somebody else, go help them. I don't need any help. I can find what I need on my own, thank you very much. I compare myself to others, and I see that I'm pretty good. My job gives me money. My doctor gives me the prescriptions I need. The electronic boxes give me entertainment. Nope. I don't need any help. Maybe it's for somebody else, Pastor. How foolish, how often foolish our hearts are, slow to believe. For you and I are slaves to our money. Our doctors cannot avert our doom. And our amusements leave us numb, and they leave us empty. But the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ knows that you and I need help. So our Lord Jesus sends to you the helper, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. But do not look for help that will make a life for you here on earth a little bit smoother. Don't look for help that will make health last a little bit longer. Don't look for help that will necessarily make your wallet a little bit fatter. That's not the kind of help this helper gives. Also, don't look for the help from this helper to be in strange miracles, exotic feelings, grand experiences. Oh, it's true, the day of Pentecost, which we will observe this upcoming Sunday, the Holy Spirit's work was confirmed through certain signs, the rushing wind. The apostles themselves speaking in other known languages as others were there to hear those languages. Later, there were the healings and other signs done by the holy apostles. But these things were never, never ever the main focus. Remember that Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, who was the one that doubted the resurrection, blessed are those who have not seen yet they have believed. Believed what? The Word. The Word spoken. The Word read. The Word proclaimed. For Jesus also said clearly, blessed are those who hear the Word of God and keep it. The apostles did not point to the signs and to the miracles, when the Holy Spirit came, the signs were only there to get the people's attention. And when they listened to his Pentecost sermon, Peter did not point to the signs, but to the water and the promise of God therein. Repent. Repent. 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. For that is the help that the Helper gives. That is the comfort of the true Comforter. This, the comfort He gives, the Word in holy baptism, the Word in holy absolution, the Word in the sacrament of the altar. Your sins, your sins are forgiven. Christ is risen and you shall rise too, is the promise of God. Christ is ascended, the way is now open for you back to the Father by Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not a way that you need to find for yourself and meander through this great labyrinth to travel by yourself. The Holy Spirit helps you, not by pointing out the way, but reminding you that Jesus Christ is the way. Not by helping you make your own truth, but reminding you of the one who is the truth. Not by helping you make your own life, but being your very life. All this is the help that the true helper gives, joining you to Jesus Christ. For without this help, without this true help from God, we all stumble. We might stumble under the burdens of this life, the cross, the tribulation, the anguish of death, But do not fear. Do not fear these things. You are a dear child of the living God. Jesus Christ promises to send the Holy Spirit to comfort you in that hour so that you do not lose heart. I am with you always to the very end of the age. There is another kind of stumbling. It's when you think you need no help at all. That truly you can make it on your own. That your own good works are enough. That somehow, some way, you've brushed yourself off and you can make it. That your sincerity is enough. That your sins are insignificant. Remember how we heard Jesus say a few weeks ago in the gospel that when the helper comes, he will convict the world of sin because They do not believe in me. For that is the real sin. Turning away from God's help and looking only unto yourself, the world, its treasures, devils, anything that you can grab hold of. Psalm 146 instructs us well. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. In other words... Don't look to the government. Don't look to the hospitals, to the courts, to the bank, to the therapists, to the travel agent for your help. Oh, some of these things might seem to be needed to get by and bring order to this life. But these are not the true, real source of your help. Do not trust in them. Now, there's a great warning in acknowledging here the Holy Scriptures. The help this helper gives, this paraclete, can seem sometimes to be unhelpful. For his help is in words. Just words. But what words they truly are. After Jesus taught that life is found in eating his flesh and drinking his blood, That those who so eat and drink, he will raise up from the grave and give eternal life. Many of his disciples turned away, walked away from Jesus. This is too hard of a teaching. We don't like this teaching. Jesus turned to the twelve and he asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Peter replied, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. To whom shall we go? Peter realized, the scriptures remind us, that there is no other help, and there is no other comfort, and there is no other counsel. His words, Jesus' word to you and to me, 
is eternal life. So why do you look to other helpers? Why do you look for comfort in things that time and time again have proven not to truly satisfy? Why do you resist the call to repent, to turn from your own sins and renounce them, to turn from earthly things, to turn from other people in which you placed all your trust for help? Say it with Peter. Say it boldly. Lord, to whom shall we go? You, you have the words of eternal life. For that is the help that the Holy Spirit gives. That is the true help of the helper, the words of Jesus. The words of Jesus and the words about Jesus. Those were the words echoing in the ears of the holy martyrs, cheerfully, cheerfully going to their deaths. Why look from help for Caesar when they had the helper who would help them through the grave? What good would it do to gain their lives back here only to lose them in all eternity to reject Christ? So remember, remember by the word, this is the help our helper gives. The devil accuses you and throws your sin in your face But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, says, none of that, none of it. Jesus paid for all your sins. The world says, we don't like you. We don't quite frankly care about you and passes you by. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, says, the Father in heaven loves you and gave his Son for you. He came to be your holy brother. Your own human flesh says, you're dying. You're dying. And even before that, you'll never, ever get control of yourself. But the Holy Spirit, the helper, says, your self-appraisal should not come from the devil, the world, or your own flesh. It comes from God, who says to you, I have redeemed you. I will save you from death and from hell. Look only to Christ. Look only to Christ and do not listen to those other voices. They only mean to harm you. My dear brothers and sisters, you need help. I need help. And we need more help than we can even fathom most of the time. But you are a baptized child of Jesus Christ. And the helper has come. His word to you, you are forgiven. And thereby pointed again by the helper to the help that is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. That you are invited to his table where he gives you the greatest help, his very self. In Jesus, in Jesus is every help you need. The very help you need. Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of Almighty God, which surpasses all human comprehension, guard and protect your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.